Do I have a question for you? Why can you not trust Adams? Trust Adams? Adams. So not like so like not like Stephen Adams for the Thunder, like like scientific Adams. Why can you not Adams. trust Adams? Atoms. I give up. So they make up everything, man. <laughs> what are you doing? What are we doing here, Derek? What are, what are we doing? <laughs> I need 10 push-ups from you right now. Get out of here. <laughs> Cue the intro. I was proud of it. <laughs> it's so good. Do you want to form an alliance with me? Absolutely, I do. Come Hello and welcome back to The Alliance. I'm Spencer Davis with Saturday Road. That's Derek Peterson with Saturday Out West. We talk about the ACC, the Pac-12, and sometimes the Big Ten, but not today. And actually, we haven't talked about them yet, but eventually we, we, might, we might get to them. Uh, we're going to talk about ACC hoops, Pac-12 hoops, and specifically the NCAA tournament bubble today. We're going to be talking about North Carolina and Oregon and their respective cases to make the NCAA tournament, what their resumes look like, what lies ahead for them over the last couple of games of the regular season. Uh, Derek, you know, I, I think a lot of people are kind of down on Oregon right now. Um, I know that you, you would disagree with that even after they've lost three out of the last four and four out of their last six. Uh, but they've got a couple road games coming up here where they could make an impression on people. So why don't we start off with Oregon and then uh, we'll get to North Carolina and, uh, and, and wrap up at the end, see, uh, see who we think is going to make it out of these two teams. Well, first of all, I would like to say that we have talked about the Big Ten, if only tangentially, when we talked about Michigan uh, and Juwan Howard and fair and hitting people. Yes. So we, we did discuss we the Big it. Ten. We, right. we discussed the, the thing the Big Ten is best for at the moment. Um, Oregon is like the most interesting bubble tournament team at like the high major level. To me, maybe maybe not to other people, but to me, Oregon's super interesting. Um, they're 18 and 11. They're 11 and 7 in the conference. They got a 5 and 3 road record, but they're 58th in the NET rating. And I'm pretty sure it's net. Uh, but every time I say net rating, I think of points per 100 possessions, the difference between offense and defense. So my brain always just goes NET. So if I say NET, that's what I mean. Um, three and six in quad one games. They're four and two in quad two games. They're three and three in quad three games. So I wrote, I wrote a piece for my website looking at, it just kind of breaks down their resume and then a bunch of other teams that are on the bubble. And if you look at Oregon comparatively, they've got a good deal of quad one wins. Like we're going to talk about North Carolina. North Carolina has one and that's it. And Oregon for now, for now yeah, for now. Um, Oregon could get to four before the regular season ends. Washington state in Pullman, which is the game that, that closes the regular season for them, that would be a quad one victory. Um, so they could get to four. They've got some good wins. They swept UCLA, which is like top 10 in Ken Palm, I believe, um, or was. And they were a point away from sweeping USC. They lost at home 70 to 69. That was the most recent outing. And they beat USC by 10 in Los Angeles earlier in the season. Now fans were not allowed at that game, which plays... Uh, uh, probably a part in it um but the 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 biggest issue with oregon is that they've got some really good wins but they've also got some really bad losses and they have a number of really bad losses they started the season six and six and they kind of like had to work their way out of that and as like dana altman teams do they got better as the season went on um my camera just did a weird thing um, and I just lost my train of thought. They got better as the year went on. <laughs> like, I think 10 of 11 at one point. And, and like you said, they've lost four of their last six. Um, so they've kind of slowed down a little bit, but you know, it's really a tale of maybe two halves. It's like three different teams that we've experienced. Yeah. There was a six and six start yeah, to the I'm season. They were bad. Then they, you know, ripped off a couple of wins. And then they lost to Cal at home by 14. They got blown out by Arizona State. 
And that's, I think that's part of the reason they're so low in the NET writing is because it factors into account margin in games. Like that's why like Washington state would be a quad one win. Washington state is a lot higher than I think people would expect to see them because they just don't get blown out. Like Oregon wins games. It's not supposed to win or it gets blown out in games. It shouldn't lose, which is kind of bad. Yeah. I mean, you look at this Oregon team. I mean, they have three of the worst losses that you could think of, right? I mean, I guess North Carolina of the two teams, North Carolina has the worst loss, the loss to the pit, but that is their only loss outside of quad one all season. Whereas you look at Oregon and they have two in quad two and three in quad three. And that includes getting swept by an Arizona state team. That's outside of the top 100 in the net. They lost to a Stanford team. That's outside of the top 100 in the net. They got beat by BYU. who's pretty good, but they lost by 150,000 points. <laughs> wasn't even close. And yeah, I mean, you're right. They, they went on a little heater in the middle of January at the height of the Omicron and beat, UCLA and USC in a 72 hour span. And that's the only reason we're even talking about them right now, because I mean, the rest of this resume to me is just, is mostly non-competitive. I mean, they beat, they did beat UCLA at home on Thursday night last week, which was honestly required uh, for them to be, you know, for us to continue talking about them as a bubble team. And then they had a chance against USC two nights later and they, they blew it. Um, You mentioned they, you know, they did go on a long run here, but that's against Pepperdine, Utah, Oregon State, Washington, Oregon State, Colorado, Stanford. Like none of these teams are any good. So, uh, okay, but at the same the time, UCLA and North Carolina US has events. one quad one win. You know, right. like that's Which that's is part Virginia of it. Like, Tech, yeah. yeah, we're talking about you know you're talking about uh, all of these teams kind of going up and down. Like Oregon has some bad losses, but also you know strength of schedule. They rank forty third. Yeah in the net strength of schedule, 47 Ken Palm strength of schedule, non-conference, they're 28 in the net, which the committee is going to look at. And they're five and three on the road. And like, <clears throat> you know, what, what's the difference between getting, getting beat by 18 against BYU or getting beat 81 to 49? Like you got beat bad. Like it just looks bad. It looks yeah. bad, but that was also <laughs> super early in the season. They played a really good um, yeah. non-conference schedule. They beat an SMU team that's gotten better. Arizona State is 105th in the NET. They're playing better basketball now. No, it's a it's a bad loss. Like it's not a loss that a team that is trying to make it into the NCAA tournament should take. But like, like Oregon's not dead, I don't think. And then I look at I don't North think Carolina. Totally dead, but yeah. I look at North Carolina, and I'm like, is North Carolina in on the strength of its resume or is North Carolina in on the strength of its name? Well, look, I'm I mean, yes, North Carolina has has a brand, certainly, but they're I mean, they're way higher in the net and in Ken Palm and in Saragin and most of these other metrics than Oregon is, which is not taking that into account at all. I mean, the, the strength of, U, of North Carolina's resume is what I just said a minute ago. No quad two losses, no quad three losses. And they did have the, the quad four loss to Pitt. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was abhorrent. I mean, that's that's terrible. You can't lose that game. But every other loss that they have is to a quad one team. And they did pick up the quad one win at Virginia Tech right after that pit game, which is kind of ironic. And uh, yeah, I mean, the Michigan game right now is not a quad one win, <clears throat> but they are just, Michigan is 34th in the net. And that needs, Michigan would need to get into the top 30 for that to become a quad one win, which is possible by the end of the year if, uh, if Michigan gets it together. They, they did lose to Illinois on Sunday. So they, they may end up dropping back a little bit from that. We'll see. But that has been a quad one win at times over the last month. So if that gets up into the quad one, um, and then, of course, they do – North Carolina technically has another quad one opportunity on its schedule at Duke on March 5th. Uh, I don't think anybody's counting on that, given how the first matchup in Chapel Hill went. But it's possible, right? I mean, it's, it's out there for the take. Uh, and obviously, if they win that game, it wouldn't even be a conversation that, that North Carolina would be in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, if, if we have to like pit these two teams against each other, which we've kind of like supposed for the topic of, of this video, it's like, which one has the better resume? Like if North Carolina beats Duke, North Carolina's in. Like just that, it, it stopped. The conversation yeah. stops there. If they beat Duke and, you know, um, <clears throat> Joe Lenardi went on ESPN during the UCLA broadcast when Oregon was playing UCLA and said that at a bare minimum, 
Oregon needed to split against the LA schools, sweep the Washington schools to close out the regular season, and then make it to either the semifinals or the championship match of the Pac-12 tournament. So like they split against the LA schools. They have to beat both of the, the Washington schools. And then we'll see what happens come tournament time. Um, but like, you know, the thing with the thing with Oregon that I've said to other people is just, you know, set aside some of the other stuff. If you want to, if you want to have a quality entertaining basketball game, that's going to be close and down to the, to the wire, like put Oregon in the field and it's going to happen. Um, because like they're playing these teams close. They lost by three to Arizona. They nearly did it against Arizona. And that was on the road. The biggest issue with Oregon is they just don't have a closer, which you, know, you put them in the tournament. I don't know how long they're going to last in the tournament. They might not last at all because they don't have somebody that can close games. Like Will Richardson is supposed to be that guy. And he was 0 for 8 against USC. Maybe on Harmon was good against UCLA, right? Yeah, he maybe, feels uh, like they, maybe that's guy. He feels like the guy that it should be, but they kind of go to Jacob Young, who I like, yeah. or Will Richardson kind of in those moments well, before they go to Davion Harmon. Well, I, I'll agree with you that Oregon will play a close game in the NCAA tournament because they won't have to play against Cal or Arizona State in the NCAA <laughs> tournament. So there you go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The Cal one was – It's indefensible. You're right. It's indefensible. <laughs> you can't lose to Cal. I mean, Jordan yeah, Shepard went for 31 points, and, and Cal had just lost its best player like a couple days before. Like, you just can't do it. By the way, by the way, Jordan Shepard, who's been in college since I don't know. I, he was in college before the year. He was at Oklahoma the year before Trey Young got to Oklahoma. And Here's Trae a funny like story. A He's about to be off his rookie scale deal. Like. <laughs> I covered Jordan Shepard's freshman season. Yes, you did. <laughs> and <then> I left. <laughs> and so when I and saw Jordan him, is, yeah. When I saw him go absolutely nuclear on Oregon and just just destroy the Ducks, I was the Leonardo DiCaprio meme pointing at my TV screen. <laughs> the whole, like the, the entire first half, I was like, who is this person? And why does the name sound so familiar to me? It was like trying to unlock something in my brain. And then it finally clicked. And I was like, hey, so. He was, he was the backup point guard on the Oklahoma team that was in between Buddy Heald and Trey Young. And he, he wasn't very good. And he transferred to, I think, Charlotte, right? He was he, the backup been... point guard on a team that lost 20 games for the first time in program history. <laughs> It's terrible. And li bad. listen, man, if if you let a guy play in college basketball six, for six years, he's going to figure it out. You know, that's why they normally keep it to four. So, yeah, exactly. um, I don't know what is there anything else we want to say about these teams? I mean, North Carolina is probably not going to be Duke. They, they definitely need to be Syracuse on Monday night. Um, probably need to win a game in the ACC tournament. But I think North Carolina is probably in. I mean, the bubble's pretty weak this year. Oregon is. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, Oregon's going to have a chance to, if, if they win these last few games, I think they'll probably squeak in and at least get to Dayton. Um, you know, there's tons of ACC teams on the bubble here. Wake Forest is on the bubble. Miami is losing enough now that they may end up on the bubble. So um, it's going to, I don't know if it's going to be North Carolina that Oregon is, is ultimately fighting us, you know, for a spot up against, but it's, uh, it's going to be one of these ACC teams, I think. Hey, you want to talk about that BYU game? that Oregon lost. You said they lost by like 15,000 points. What happened in the, the North Carolina Miami game? That was not a flattering scoreline either. BYU's well, listen, a good team too. <laughs> no, That's what I'm uh, saying. Miami's I actually really like Miami. I would, uh, if Miami makes it, I think they're, they're a dark horse sweet 16 team is like an 11 seed. Oh, they just play four guards and they have a big who can shoot. I would, uh, I, I would go ahead and put a sharpie next to miami's name assuming they make it they may not i don't know <laughs> they but, miami might lose on you know might lose their last two regular season games to boston college and syracuse and just not make it but i just i just would like to point out the uh incredibleness of that statement like the awesomeness that is that statement that you just made they could go to the sweet 16 they could also lose to boston college right now that's college basketball man that's where we're, we're almost to march this video comes out the day before March. So if you're, if you're watching this on Tuesday or after, welcome to March Madness. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, thank you guys for hanging with us for another week here on the Alliance. We will be back next week, probably to talk more college hoops to, uh, you know, recap the, the end of the regular season and preview some conference tournaments. So uh, we appreciate it. And you guys have a great night.